and welcome back to lesson 12 of basic CNC programming. In this lesson we're going to be talking about feeds and speeds and some of the basic format used inside of a CNC mill program. Now it's important that at the beginning of the program that the machine knows whether we're going to be using inches per minute feed rate or inches per revolution feed rate. So these are the two modes we'll be discussing. The G94 will put the machine in inch per minute mode and the G95 will put the machine in inches per revolution mode. So let's take a look and see how that is used in a program. So at the very top of the program we have our safety line and it is on that line of code that we either put the machine in inches per minute or inches per revolution mode or the G94 and G95. Now once it's been called at the very beginning of the program it stays modal throughout the whole program, meaning you don't have to call it again unless it's been changed for some reason to G95. Um, you want to do it at least at the beginning of the program because of a previous program that may have left the machine in a G95 mode. So once you call it at the top, you're good to go for the rest of the program. Now let's talk about at what point in the program you actually need to call a feed rate command. Now we've learned that at the top of the program we're basically calling up tools, we're wrapping to our start position, we're turning the tool on, we're calling up offsets and tool offset lengths, but as soon as you call the first G1 or feed move, which could either be a G1, G2 or G3, it is necessary to put a feed rate on that line. Now the machine will alarm out if you call it G1, G2 or G3 without a feed at the very top of the program. Now once a feed rate has been called it stays modal throughout the whole program meaning that unless you want to change the feed rate there's no need to, to change that feed that you commanded. Now, the feed rate of 30 inches a minute right here is the feed rate that we are coming down in Z to start our tool at our first depth of cut. Now we're not cutting metal at that point so we can go 30 inches a minute but once we get ready to start cutting we want to slow things down a little bit so at that point we need to call a different feed rate. Now as we're walking around our square, if we want to stay at the same feed rate, there's no need to call that feed rate on every line. So it stays modal. Then we wrap it back up and send everything back home. We call up our next tool and, and the very first time you call up a feed command. Now it will remember the last feed rate commanded in the top of the program. So had I not put a G, or the F40 right here, then it would have fed down at a feed rate of F15 because that's the last thing it saw. But we want to speed things up even more, coming down to our Z minus half inch where we're going to start cutting. And of course on our finished pass, we're going to be feeding a little bit faster than on our rough pass. So we change our feed rate to 25 inches a minute right there. Again, that stays modal for the rest of the program unless we want to slow things down or speed things up. So then we wrap it back home and that's the end of the program. So you can see how we've changed feed rates several times, but only if you want to change feed rates is it necessary to command a feed rate. Alright, so that covers a basic format of how to program feed rates so now let's talk a little bit about calculating the feed rates based on the spindle RPM. Alright, so to calculate your feeds and speeds, it is very helpful to have a chart similar to this that shows all the different types of materials and then the recommended service footage and recommended feed per tooth depending on the type of tool that you're using, whether that's high speed steel or carbide. So let's take a look at this uh, example of the 4140, the fourth down right here. The high speed steel recommendation service footage is 70 
and it's 300 for carbide. Then the feed per tooth is on one thousandths to four thousandths for high speed and then one and a half thousandths to six thousandths feet per tooth for carbide. And of course there's a column right here for drills, feet per tooth for high speed drill. So let's take a look at some formulas that we will use to calculate and how we use these values to come up with our RPM. Alright so let's take a look at these formulas and let's uh, plug in some of the numbers that we saw in that chart. First thing I'd like to do is determine the RPM of a half inch four flute carbide end mill. So we're going to plug in these numbers into our calculator based on the chart that we were just looking at. So for the 4140 using a carbide end mill the service footage is 300 and the recommended feed per tooth will be anywhere between one and a half to six so let's use three we're gonna start a little bit conservative and let's see what that gives us so let's go back to our formula let's bring up the calculator and let's plug in some numbers here the 3.82 is a constant that is going to be used in uh, in every calculation no matter what size end mill you use that's why it's a constant so let's plug that in 3.82 times the recommended service footage was 300 in that chart so that brings us to 1146 and then we're going to divide that by the half inch diameter tool which is 2292 rpm to be exact so let's use that number to figure out our inches per minute feed rate now it says here that it wants the inch per tooth times the number of the teeth times the RPM. So here we are, we have the 2200 to 9200 RPM. We have a four flute end mill and we're going to use three thousandths inch per tooth. So let's plug those numbers in. Alright, so three thousandths times the number of teeth which is four equals times the 2292 rpm we just figured equals 27 inches a minute is the recommended feed rate for that tool for cutting 4140 steel now you may want to slow down um, a little bit in the beginning and it all depends on the depth cut how much material you're taking how rigid your, your setup is so just kind of ease into it a little bit but this definitely puts you in the ballpark and you shouldn't hurt anything all right so let's take a look at these other formulas if you want to determine the service footage then we plug in the rpm multiply that times the diameter of the tool and divide that by the 3.8 constant so let's clear our calculator and enter our values. Let's go ahead and use the 2292 RPM from our previous calculation and multiply that times the half inch diameter tool equals and then divide that by 3.82. And we're back to our 300 service footage from our previous example. So that's how you back figure the service footage of a tool so let's see here we have used the rpm the inches per minute and so let's move on to the inch per tooth now for that formula because this is in parentheses i'm going to switch this calculator to scientific mode and that will help us find this answer a little bit easier so the inches per minute let's go ahead and put in 25 inches per minute and we're going to divide that by and we're going to put in parentheses the number of teeth which will be four teeth times the rpm let's say 2500 and then we close the parentheses that makes 10,000 and then we say equals two and a half thousandths inch per tooth so that's how you back figure the inch per tooth of your process all right and then we have one more left and that is the inch per revolution 
and that is the inches per minute used divided by the RPM. So let's say we are using 25 inches per minute in our program divided by our 2500 RPM and that comes out to 10 thousandths per revolution. So that means that every time the end mill makes one revolution it moves forward 10 thousandths. So that would be our G95 mode which is inch per revolution versus the inch per minute mode, the G94. So that covers feeds and speeds. I thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.